I just, I, I mean, I just. So tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Here's your headline: Chelsea drop points at home to 19th place Burnley, who were a man down. And here's the killer, or here's the big, the big one. They could have won it. In a couple of occasions, they genuinely could have won it. And I'm going to say it now when it's in my brain. We've seriously let Cole Palmer down. I'm going to talk about this game, the performances. But this is Cole Palmer scoring the goal to put us up. And then scoring the goal that should have been the winner. And look, the, the goal that conceded the equaliser... Is on Petrovic. He tried to catch it and threw it in his own net. Look, look Petrovic has been great largely, but oh, so... I did a video, right? Was it yesterday? Talking about yeah, you know, we can we can have a good season here, but when we play like that, and look, I know look, both those centre backs today were absolutely awful. The two Monaco boys, Badia Shiel and Disassi. Like, I'm, I'm kind of speechless because Burnley will feel really hard done by that they conceded the penalty and got um, a player sent off anyway. And uh, I'm just fuming. I, I'm really. Hey, hey, Mia, the cat's come in. Look, I'm very upset right now, Mia. <laughs> Look, Burnley could have won this, bro. 19th place Burnley. Look, we always there's 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 recurring themes all over the gaff in this game, right? One, we always play terribly after international breaks. Two, we always have a thousands of injuries, and the commentary team of the coverage I was watching in this game kept going, Wow, Chelsea got so many injuries. Ten, now another eleven. Yeah, fine. I don't feel sorry for Chelsea anymore because clearly we've got some kind of combustive medical department that we are investigating apparently to just constantly rehire new people. I ain't gonna feel sorry for us anymore. Like it sucks when you have injuries. But this freaking game, bro, when you're so poor without the ball, this, bro, like, hey, this has to be down to Maurizio Pochettino, right? Surely. Like, surely. There was great moments from the wide men, Palmer and Mudrick. Like, Mudrick didn't score today, but I think he was largely excellent. And uh, I think um, I would have liked him to move inside a little bit earlier and play more, but very, very happy with Mudrick, of course, coming off high confidence. Palmer didn't play for England, but didn't stop him from getting two friggin' goals. Um, oh, the midfield, without the ball, the spaces with Chelsea, the spaces between the lines without the ball, it's just terrible. Oh, my God. All right, let's, let's talk about what happened in this friggin' game, bro. For a jump of a building. 4 2 3 1 for Chelsea. It is very much a 4 2 3 1 these days. Petrovic in goal, who played well until he f chucked one in. Kukurea left back. Look, I was happy with this lineup. Can I just say now? Kukurea left back. Um, apparently, Chilwell was a little bit injured, but I didn't think he was great for England. So fine. Kukurea, welcome sight. Gusto, everyone loves. Amazing player. And then the Monaco boys, Disessi and Bad Issue. Fine. Caicedo and Enzo play, fine. If they're fit enough to play after the international break, I mean, I, I don't think they should always start straight away after flying around South America, but whatever, they're fit to start. Gallagher in the 10, he's been playing awful in the double pivot for both Chelsea and England. Great, bring him back in the 10 and see if we can do some of that high press. Although, against Burnley, especially when they went down to 10 men, it's not about pressing, it's about playing between the lines, and I don't think Gallagher's excellent at that. Palmer on the right, Mudrick on the left, a welcome sight, Jackson up top. Everyone's like, cool. Mudrick starts over Sterling, good work, happy with that. Uh, and to be fair to Sterling, he came on and got a pretty darn excellent assist. Um, and we saw Gilchrist come on for Augusto, who looked a bit like an inj a bit of an injury. Uh, Madweke come on for Gallagher, um, so it was a very much a floating front four of course jackson was up front look man 4-4-2 four, four, for burnley which became a 4-5 when they had a player sent off we had 33 shots but they had 18 they should never have 18 shots 
10 man Burnley at Stamford Bridge should not have 18 shots. I'm sorry, bro. I don't care what kind of football they play under Vincent Company. That's just not. No. No, no, no. <sighs> 16th minute. Asignon gets his first card. Kukure gets one shortly after. And in the 40th minute, he fouls, fouls Mudrick in the box and gets a second yellow, which is a red. It's soft. It's controversial. It's probably not a foul slash penalty slash second yellow slash sending off. So we get bailed out after a profligate first half uh, and Cole Palmer steps up for the penalty, thank goodness, because um, Sterling isn't there. And Penenka's what, uh, what was an amazing performance from the Burnley goalkeeper on the day in Marich. Three million pounds, by the way, from the City Academy. He's pretty incredible. Um, yeah, but he gets penenka by Cole. We're like, right, fine. One nil up against 10-man Burnley. We've not been good in this first half, but let's absolutely tear them apart in the second uh, we start the second half um, really badly, and within two minutes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, two minutes, that we concede. Granted, I'm going to be a little bit fair here. <laughs> I try and always be fair, but let's be fair here. Josh Cullen scores his first Premier League goal, assisted by the other Josh, Josh Brownhill. It is a great goal. Uh, if you watch it back, the assist, I think it's outside of the boot, side sort of... Sort of you know, squares it almost, and it's a sort of outside the boot finish to the side. Both the assist and the the actual finish make it a really good goal through the defence and past the goalkeeper. So it's unfortunate that we afforded that ability, but I'm kind of like willing to give them that. We've had a really terrible first half. We always can see the beginning of the second. At least it wasn't like a Disassi own goal. More on him in a minute, by the way. Now, of course, Dissessi had a, a goal ruled out early doors as well for handball. Probably was a handball. Look, I ain't going to have any, a go at officials at all today. In fact, the only thing, the main thing they did wrong was give us a penalty. <laughs> Gallagher gets a yellow. He rides that um, for a while. I said that's in the first half, actually. Um, and yes, so we're one all, and we're one all for ages and ages and ages. There's loads of changes. By the way, company gets sent off after that decision. He gets a straight red. Clearly, he sent some naughties to the officials. But yeah, fair play. You're fighting relegation. You're playing well, and you have a horrible decision go against you. Yeah, I mean, but like what? Seven out of ten managers probably do the same there. So whatever. Uh, Gallagher comes off, Madueke comes on, and that's kind of what we wanted. So I think Palmer moves to the middle, like a number 10, or him and Madueke are sort of switching on the right. We all wanted to see Madueke, this is probably about right, um, because he played so excellent for England under 21s, two goals, two assists. Um, and then we see Sterling come on for Caicedo. So at this point, I don't know what the friggin' formation we're playing. It's like Enzo's a one-man lone pivot midfield, and then... There's like four players behind the striker, so it's kind of like a 4-1-4-1. But instead of having a proper CDM, we had like Enzo playing quarterback. Which I get it. You know, you're against 10-man Burnley at home, you got to go for it. And then it's a great goal. Um, Sterling comes on for... So Sterling comes on for Caicedo. And I got no issue with Sterling coming on. People are upset with it. But look, if you're ever... What, you're never going to play Sterling again this season? 325k player we needed an actual left winger though actually he came on and sort of played midfield it was kind of peculiar so sterling comes on and to sterling's credit i was saying this on my instagram just don't shoot only try and assist and to his credit he did what was an excellent assist and an excellent goal for cole palmer um it was a great pass from enzo playing that quarterback role you know, early doors getting the pass in. Sterling with a great touch. And Palmer with the finish. Going up 2-1 in the 78th minute. And at this point, you're thinking, all right. All right, we've laboured. We've made this embarrassing. But the only thing that matters at this point is three points so we can think about ascending the table. Because if you don't win this, you're an absolute bunch of so-and-sos. Um, but no, three, min three minutes later... Three minutes later, Josh Cullen, who scored the goal, assisted Dar O'Shea. Um, and by the way, yeah, look, I feel bad for Petro Petrovic. Largely, he's been excellent. He made a couple of brilliant saves, or at least one brilliant save in this game. A couple of general saves. Largely, he's been brilliant, but he he's listed here as an error for the goal on whoscored.com, which is what I'm using for the stats and timeline. Petrovic, um, just, he tried to catch it. He should have just saved it. 
and patted it away for, you know, even a corner. Because you're winning, bro. You're winning. Don't take any chances. Play the percentages. And he will learn from this. He's young. He's, you know, especially for a goalkeeper, he's young. But you play the percentages. And he tries to catch it and he just sort of throws it in his own net. And I just think, come on, bro. It's catching. You've had such a good season when you're coming on. You know, not perfect, but very good, Petrovic. Why do you have to join in in the fun in this absolute stupidity it really is catching so they get that and then we you know gusto comes off gilchrist comes on and we sort of i say apply pressure in bird commas but don't and they get and they get point and look burnley you know you got a win last time out against 10 men in brentford and with 10 men you got a draw against chelsea and you could have won it especially like you know in certain instances i know we had way more shots but they had shots as well they, they had over 30 percent possession when in the second half for a long time they only had uh what was it like freaking 18 or something so they clawed it back they won f- uh, 15 aerials to our seven they won more tackles still got a few corners they ventured out and they deserve plaudits for this man the m- way more impressive team in this game is burnley 19th place Burnley. Or maybe they they called us, but doubt they have. 19th place Burnley. So, player performances, Petrovic. When you throw one, when you flap it about, you, you've got to be bad. Kukurea, fine. Gusto, good. Centre backs, tragic. Bad as shield. Like, he's just gone off. He goes off. He just goes off places. I think I think and these guys are supposed to have chemistry. They played together in France for a long time. People love Badio Shield with like the Chelsea hips the choice for a while. Disassi, you know, masterclass away the Etihad. It's all bollocks, mate, because you can't freaking hold your sugar together at Stamford Bridge against ten man Burnley. You absolutely soiled the bed the midfield look and this is this is why i'm putting this on potch because fernandez and caicedo can play better like is what is pochettino is well regarded as a good coach he was long been linked to man united real madrid i've never really liked him massively but i understood why He's quite a good coach, I was thought, but I understood for the reasons why he was hired at Chelsea to see this transition to coach young players. All right, it seems like a good hire, but is he playing? Is he just still playing like 2015 Tottenham ball in the Premier League? Is he still employing that approach? Because it, the Premier League changes every like 10 to sort of 18 months in terms of how you have to play and evolve to stay alive in this league, you know. And the way the space is between the lines is friggin' criminal, mate. And how without the ball, we were so awful. And it makes me sad because, you know, I'm losing. I'm sort of, I hate how the fact I'm falling out of love with Gallagher at the end of this season. Because I, I mean that in like a fleeting sense, you know, because he's an incredible player and like a, a, a devoted you know, Chelsea man or whatever, which is important. It genuinely is. But, um, Palmer excellent, Mudrick great, Jackson bad. I just feel like we're even Sterling. Sterling did all he could do. He got that assist. I'd said don't shoot. He gets an amazing ball from Palmer, which would have been all three goal involvements from Palmer, and he heads it. I mean, Sterling's not going to run onto a a, a cross field ball and head it in, is he? It's just not his vibes. Oh, Oh. What do we do? I mean, they're not going to sack Pochettino. Like, do we... It's just so bad. Like, yes, Mudrick's getting better, good. Yes, Palmer's getting better, good. Yes, generally, Jackson is having a decent season. Gusto, really, really good. Um, Petrovic, until he freaking chucked one in his own net today, he's generally had a very good season. Madweke... Good. I mean, uh, he's still a kid, man. Okay, he kind of exudes that. But when he's feeling it himself, he's very, very good. But bringing him on to save a game, I just don't think he's got that at the moment. Which is totally fine, by the way. Like, And Gilchrist, fine, been utilised a little bit. Clearly a good defensive player that likes that. It's okay to play out wide. I mean, I would have started Gilchrist as a centre-back in this game, you know? I would have started, in hindsight, both the French guys can go. Silva and Gilchrist. Gilchrist right centre-back, Thiago Silva left centre-back. We probably would have won. 
At least Thiago Silva would have played some accurate long balls. And to be honest, I know this is hindsight, and hindsight's twenty twenty because they went down to 10 men. But because they defended so deep, we could have done with Thiago Silva. I mean, I might have even subbed off one of the centre-backs and just brought on Thiago Silva, you know, have a runner next to him, whether it's a midfielder or dropping back, you know, or whatever, and then just play one up front and combine, I don't know. At least he can play some of those balls in behind. But when these games fizzle out like that, right, you see Jackson's... Because he's young as well, you see Jackson's, like, uh, confidence dropping. All of them, except Palmer. Palmer's the only one that's immune to this child, to this understandably immature you know, element of just fizzling out a game. Oh, we're not winning. Oh, we can't do it. You know, Palm is the only one who goes, yeah, we can. Do you know what I mean? And that comes, and that comes with like a confidence with Palmer. But mature players don't give up. Um, you know, it's what you see with, you know, the, I think the Joshes are um, actually Brownhill and Cullen and both got an assist and Cullen got the goal. I think they're one, more of the senior players as well. So this just goes to show you like, you need some big boys because later in the game, they will take advantage. Jay Rodriguez came on uh, and scored, nearly scored an overhead kick to win it for them. Tells you everything you need to know about this game. Chelsea fans will understandably and quite rightly be, I'd say, disgusted with this. Um, it kind of is what it is at this point. Look, we're about to get into April. Um, we do have a semi-final at, uh, you know, at... Wembley and anything can happen now but if the players like if they do genuinely like Pochettino and um if you sack him it will upset them and cause a bit of like an unrest in the dressing room then don't do it and wait till the summer and evaluate the summer if he's won the FA Cup whatever then we've qualified for the Europa League talk about it then but like you know I've been relatively sort of like stoic agnostic about it but when I see stuff like this the space between the lines the play without the ball it's just poor so maybe we should sack him I don't know is there any point let me know what you think comment down below Thank you for subscribing. All right.